Now my hi Ray, my kia ora, and welcome to the Beef and Lamb New Zealand Catchment E Forum. My name is Tom Orcheston. I'm the Environment Capability Manager for the South Island, um, and today I'll be your host. Our topic today is maintaining our momentum in the catchment group, and we're joined by expert panelists Emma Crutchley, Lloyd McCall, and Roger Dalrymple. Um, so the, the session today is about how catchment groups and catchment group members can maintain interest, vitality, and activity within groups. Success is a very important in maintaining group momentum, and, we, and we're also going to find out what are some of the things that we can do um, from learning from our mistakes or challenges. And does the need to always be something on the go, or is it, some, some, is it okay to sometimes have some downtime? And getting the balance right is really important with the catchment groups to avoid burnout from trying to do too much, but still doing enough to keep things going. We have our three panellists today and they will offer their insights, experiences, and they're all outstanding farmers and made a huge contribution to their own catchment groups and to other catchment groups throughout Aotearoa New Zealand. I'll now introduce our catchment, uh, our catchment group panelists, um, and then they, will, um, then they will introduce their catchment groups. So first up, I'd like to introduce Roger Dalrymple. Roger is the chair of the Rangatike Rivers Catchment Collective, and also on the Environment Reference Group for Beef and Lamb New Zealand. His farm, family farm at Waitatapia Station, located on the coast between Palmerston North and Whanganui. They have a mixed sheep and beef uh, finishing farm, and they also grow, grow maize, barley, and vegetables, which go to the local market. Um, they also have some forestry on their farm. Roger oversees the family farming operation. And he's a great team, but he's keen to get on, jump on the digger or the tractor and occasionally on the handpiece when the need arises. Enjoys mountain biking, he's just purchased an e-bike, which has taken two years of denial um, before crossing the line, and he really loves that. So Roger, I'm going to ask you now, um, if you could just briefly introduce your, um, your catchment to us, please. Thanks, Tom. Um, yep, welcome everyone. Uh, it's good being involved in these things because I'm pretty passionate about community catchments. So I'm the chair of the um, Rangatiki Rivers Catchment Collective, which is, um, basically ranges from the Mount Ruapehu down to the coast. Uh, and it stretches from Whanganui across to, not Palmerston North, because that's the Manawa 2 one. It covers about 700,000 um, hectares. Uh, it's going fairly well. Um, we've got 20 sub catchment groups in it um, at the moment, and it keeps growing. We're just about, we've just about covered the whole thing, but it's, it's, it's covered with the, and incorporate society over the top. And we have, as I said, we're up to 20 sub catchment groups um, underneath. Um, that's probably all I need to introduce, isn't it, Tom? Just a quick overview. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it works well. Um, and uh, it goes up and down as far as momentum, but we'll get into that subject as we go forward. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Roger. Really appreciate that. Um, now I'm going to introduce you to Emma Crutchley. Um, Emma is on the governance committee of the Tiaki Maniatoto Upper Tairi Wai Catchment Restoration Project. Uh, she works on the project as, a, um, as an executive and is involved in strategic planning, stakeholder engagement, and searching for opportunities to make the project better. She runs Pukatoi, uh, which is a 3,000 3, hectare sheep and beef and arable farm with her husband Kyle and their two children, Evelyn and Reuben. Um, they, they finish lambs and sell Angus bulls along with barley and rye corn seed. Emma takes an active role in, uh, with her working dogs and loves to keep active with sports um, and loves running. Um, and lately she has taken up a daily yoga routine. Now, Emma, I'm going to pass over to you now if you are able to just briefly introduce your, um, your Maniatoto Apatari Y group to us, please. Kia ora koutou. thanks for having me um, today everybody. Um, so I am an active catchment member, catchment group member of Apatari Y, and that is a group that has evolved probably over the last 20 years. It started in about 2001 with the Tairi Trust which covered the whole Tairi River and that was around the issue of water quality and from there um, that project was awarded a, a Green Ribbon Award um, as part of um, the from the Ministry of Environment back in those days. And that evolved then into the Upper Tai Water Resource Management Group, which was focused around water quality and quantity issues, um, mainly with the renewal of a large number of deemed permits, um, which are 
into resource consent so like old mining licenses um, for water takes in Otago and so that um, basically brought together a whole lot of old mining groups old mining licenses into a universal consent and um, that sort of worked out that pro process over a number of years and when it came to the 2021 deadline we had some of the lowest number of deemed permits in Otago because it had been addressed at catchment level um, from there, um, it moved into we sort of there was a bit of a lull, and in, in about 2018, we started thinking about how how we respond to some of the public pressure around um, water quality and quantity, and um, that led us to applying for um, a large amount of funding with the Jobs for Nature initiative back in 2020. Um, so currently I work as project executive, as Tom said, and, and that's a large $6 million multi-stakeholder um, operation that is co-funded and supported by Fish and Game Otago, uh, the Department of Conservation, and we work quite closely alongside the Tamana O Tairi Na Awa project. Um, so that's been a pleasure to work with them, and we work around sort of fencing, recreational areas, um, planting, um, yeah, and so we're just kicking into that. So it's it's a bit of a beast. I think that's my time up. That's great. Thanks very much, Gemma. Really appreciate that. Um, of you being able to outline uh, your catchment group to us. So thank you very much. I'm now going to introduce Lloyd McCall. Lloyd is a founding member of the Pomahaka Water Care Group, which was established in 2014. He runs a 600 cow dairy farm in runoff. And when he's not on the farm, he's a project manager for the Pomahaka Water Care Group. And he also manages the Otago South River Care Group. He also looks after um, a heifer sheep block um, and he helps at the local Pomahaka nursery who sell between 10 and 12,000 native uh, riparian plants per year. Um, he's also uh, on the Clutha District Council and has been learning te reo Māori um, and he's got a dog named Eileen who mm -hmm. thinks that she is a sheep. Um, Lloyd, I'll pass over to you now to briefly introduce your Pomahaka uh, catchment group to us, please. Uh, kia ora koutou, ko Tabuanuku Tumonga, ko Pomahaka Te Hawa, uh, nō wai ko Tui Ahau, ko Lloyd McCall, ko Tuku Ingoa. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Tom. Um, Pomahaka Water Care Group um, is a bit of beast. So I'll, I'll give a bit of rundown. The Water Care Air Group started in 2014, flying around the meetings after the Pomahaka, Pomahaka River was recognised, was tagged as being a dirty waterway in the Otago area. Um, there was a light bulb moment whereby there was some grass put up with some water quality measurements relating to what the standards were, and they were pretty terrible. Um, and that's where we decided the only way we could fix this was for the farmers to fix the problem. And the problem was you don't know you've got a problem until you know, you can't fix a problem until you know you've got a problem. We, nobody knew we had a problem. Um, and it wasn't until that graph came up that we, that we um, recognised that there was a problem. So there was a group of six farmers got together um, in the pub a couple of weeks later, and that was, the, and we sat down and created a plan. And it's, and it's very much a farmer based plan, and that plan is what we still use today. Um, I think the key, the key things are that at the end of the day, it's, it's, the rest is history, but it's come down as well, it's all about the farmers. So it's all about farmer led stuff, and everything we do is with farmers. We've got a strong group of about 12, which we can talk about later on. We had no funding. Um, we just got on and, and we had subscriptions and got on and found out more about our waterways and what we could do to fix them. Um, we got ourselves incorporated in 2016, um, ahead of getting some getting some funding from MPI in 2018 for three years, which is currently run out. So that's pretty much the water care group. The water, uh, the Pomahaki area is an area of 20, um, 2,020 square kilometres. It's got um, approximately um, between three and a half and four and a half thousand uh, kilometres of, God, I've lost, I've lost my word, sorry, it's not like me. It's got um, 
between four and a, three and a half and four and a half um, thousand kilometers of waterways, depending on how you measure a waterway. It's got around 350 farmers in the area. Um, we started off at first year, we had 50 farmers, and now we have 180 farmers in the catchment group. So that's pretty much our catchment group.